Hare Krishna. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Mahatma Gandhi. Many spiritual traditions and many self-help teachers talk about how we need to remember the finitude of our life. That we are going to die sometime in the future and that sometime may even be next day. So, this will bring a sense of priority and urgency in our life. And our attitudes determine our actions. The way we conceive of things determine how will we act on them. So, for, in, for doing good, we need to have a sense of urgency. That I don't have much time. I need to do the best that I can do in the time that I have. At the same time, we need a different frame if we are to study, if we are to learn. Learn as if we were to live forever. Why is that? Because learning, if done hastily, remains shallow. If we are to learn deeply, if we are to assimilate a subject, then it requires time, it requires immersion and it requires the capacity for undistracted absorption. So, for example, when students study simply for clearing an exam and they study just the last few days during the preparatory leave, then they may clear the exams. They may even, if they have good memorization capacity, they may even remember the necessary facts and regurgitate them during the exam and get good grades. But still, they will not have learned the subject much. Whatever facts they have memorized, they will soon forget them. And because there was no deep understanding that was there, so that will also pass on. But they never got the understanding. And more importantly even, that when we apply ourselves to study a subject, we get a disciplined mind. We get a sharply honed mind capable of learning things. That is a far more enduring asset than the specific knowledge that we may have learned. So, even the deep knowledge of the subject and the training of the mind to learn deeply, both of them are missed out if we learn things in a hurry. So, this applies this needing time and giving time for serious study of subjects applies not just to material life or material subjects, it applies all the more so to spiritual subjects, life's ultimate questions. Who am I? Not just in terms of what is my name, but what am I? What is the essential substance of my identity? Now, where did I come from? What is the purpose of the world? What is the purpose of life? How should I live so that I can find happiness in my life? These are the big questions of life. And these questions are vital for us to live a truly productive life. And these questions often don't have easy answers. We may get some pat answers when we study some books. Some people may say that there's, there is just no meaning, there is just no purpose. But how do we know whether that is true or not? To really understand the answers to the subjects, even if you are fortunate enough to come in contact with a tradition based on revelation, to a tradition which gives access to ancient wisdom texts, 
which reveal the answers to these timeless questions as have been found by the best brains from the past, even to understand those answers at a deep internalized level that requires time. So life's big questions, if we make learning a very hasty activity, then we will never have time for life's big questions. Because we will feel, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do that. And these questions, who knows the answers? Why bother about it? We will just become apathetic to them. The Bhagavad Gita itself demonstrates how important and how urgent it is to understand the answers to life's big, life's big questions and how we need to do whatever it takes to make time for finding these answers. The Bhagavad Gita is spoken in the middle of a battlefield where both the armies are assembled to fight a major war and the conches have been blown to indicate the beginning of the hostilities. And yet at that time, Arjuna finds himself overwhelmed by an ethical crisis. And there in the middle of the battlefield, he asks Krishna, Pruchami Tvam Dharma Sammudha Chetaha. I want to know what is Dharma? What is duty? What is it that I am meant to do? Dharma refers not just to religion or duty, it refers to our innate nature. It refers to the actions that harmonize us with our innate nature. And for over the next 600, 700 verses total, Krishna speaks that message and Arjuna hears. Arjuna asks questions. It is not that at that time Krishna and Arjuna are constantly looking here and there. Oh, everybody is waiting for us. They are distracted. They are trying to finish off the conversation. No, they have a deep conversation. And reflecting the ethos of those times, everybody waits for their discussion to complete. And thus, when we have to learn, if Krishna and Arjuna could make time on a battlefield, we too can make time. And when we are learning, we need to go deep into the subject, truly try to understand the subject, not just skim through, not just search for some titillating information, but look for some, some illuminating wisdom, some illuminating comprehension. With this attitude, when we study, uh, and keep in mind that you know we don't let the urgency distract us from immersion, then we will find that spiritual knowledge will give us profound illumination and the ultimate transformation, empowering us with wisdom to make right choices and progress towards life's ultimate success. Thank you. Hare Krishna.